And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. Welcome back to DJ Sokol Arena. Marquette and Creighton just about to get going. They are currently announcing the starters for this one. So let us do the same and take a look at the five players that we'll see on the court first for each squad up first for Marquette as you see them being introduced there. You see the starters, one freshman, a sophomore, a couple juniors, and a senior. You mentioned it, Rob, in the open. This is a group, obviously, a lot of new players replacing all five starters from a year ago. Well, and outside of the Big East fresh preseason freshman of the year, Jordan King, those other four players were on those talented Marquette teams that won championships. They just didn't play as many minutes. Selena Lott was a, obviously a, a key contributor to those. But these other three, Spangola, Clunin, Van Clunin, and Murata, all almost doubling their output from a season ago. Yeah, it is, uh, it's interesting when you obviously have to replace that much, what it will mean early. They've gotten off to a good start this year, nine and three, and coming off of an 18 point defeat to the number 16 team in the country, the DePaul Blue Demons. On the other side for the Creighton Blue Jays as they are introduced right now in front of the faithful here. It has been a lineup that's been all over the place as of late, four different starting lineups in the last six games. This is a group, Rob, that has had a ton of injuries throughout the year. We talked about her in the open. Jalen Agnew, a tremendous start to this season. Yeah, absolutely. And where would the Jays be without her three-time Big East Player of the Week already this year? And you take a look, Tatum Rembaugh is the name that you would normally see in there. She is missing her fourth straight game. She started the first 10 contests of the year in her stead. Rachel Saunders has now been in the starting lineup in five of the last six contests for the Blue Jays. And when Olivia Elger there on the left, when she can stay healthy, Throughout her career, she has shown to be very productive, but it's when she's been healthy. It's been, she's a fifth year senior. One of those was an injury medical red shirt. When she's healthy, she is a huge contributor for these Blue Jays. There is Jalen Agnew, the senior out of Kansas. As Rob just said, a three time Big East player of the week. And there is head coach Jim Flannery in his 18th season leading the Blue Jays, has guided the Blue Jays to the postseason 14 times, though not a year ago. And I know that that was something throughout the offseason that they talked about a lot. And they've gotten off to a good start this year, 10-3 and three on the season overall and sitting at 2-0 and oh in Big East play. And then on the other side, you see Megan Duffy, head coach in her first season here with Marquette, her third overall. She's had quite a few stops, St. John's, George Washington, and Michigan in the first year here with Marquette. Yeah, so not only an assistant coach in the Big East at St. John's, but also a player in the Big East, a starting point guard for those talented Notre Dame teams in the first decade of this century, and uh, just a great addition to welcome her back into the Big East. And she has really helped this team. This team was picked ninth in the preseason. They are off to a tremendous start as well. Yeah, a lot of production to be replaced, and they have certainly got off to a good start in the non-conference. They're hoping that that now goes into conference play. They win the tip. Murata on the ground. She gets up, hands the ball off to Jordan King. This is a team that has a lot of size. They get rebounds often. As the shot missed there and taken in by Olivia Elger. Right off the bat, you see what Coach Flannery had planned on doing with a bigger team, Marquette. They will sag off and challenge the other post to step out and hit those long shots, and they were unable to do it there. Elger with a couple of players in front of her. She gives it back to Saunders, who hands it off to Agnew. Went off her face for a moment, but she's able to regain control. Seven seconds now on the shot clock. Sarda drives in, kicks it out to Grigley Young, and she puts up a miss there off the iron. Ben Clunin with the board. Yeah, both defenses doing what they want to on that first possession. And a quick turnover for Marquette, so it'll go back over to the Blue Jays. On that turnover forced by the Blue Jays, something Marquette wants and needs to atone for last week in their loss at DePaul, 26 turnovers. He goes away early against Creighton, one of the best in the country, in fact, the second best in the country, about 10 and a half turnovers per game for the Blue Jays. Big Leone over to Saunders in front of the Marquette bench. 
Elger stops, pop, puts that one up and in, and the Blue Jays take an early 2-0 lead. Elger with that step back that she's known for. A nice play there by Elger, was able to get a hand, knocked it out of bounds, so it will remain with the Golden Eagles. Marquette on game two of a three-game road trip to begin at conference play. Here's King. Driving with the left hand, excellent move, closed by a bevy of Blue Jays, misses, rebound by Van Clunen, and now here's a three put up and in by Selena Lott. Selena Lott led the Big East in three-point percentage last year, shooting at a 44% clip and right at about 40% this season for the Golden Eagles leading the team in scoring. Coming off of an 18-point performance versus DePaul on eight of 10 shooting. Just a tremendous night for her in that tough loss versus the top 25 squad. Nice drive there by Saunders. Misses, gets her own rebound off the glass, puts that one up, doesn't get it to fall, and Murata with the board. Excellent pass inside to Murata, and she lays it in with the left hand. And Marquette builds a lead to three. Creighton wants to sag, they want to double, but at the same time, you have to know where the open player is and account for, and they did not do it there. Excellent cut by Marana. Here's Agnew putting up a shot, a little short there. Rebound taken in by Spingola, and it goes the other way. Marana inside, good defense there by Saunders. Wasn't able to corral it, though, and so Marquette keeps it for the time being. No shot clock reset, so 15 seconds left. A fadeaway put up and in by Van Clunen. Nice shot. Marquette with their largest lead, 7-2. Yeah, off to a great start offensively, hitting three of their first five shots. They shot 50% at DePaul last week. It wasn't their shooting that did them in. It was just the inability to hold on to the basketball. They're a very talented offensive team when they keep the ball. Really good possession so far. Sarda, I don't know if she realized that there was nobody there, she would have had a wide open shot. Instead, the Blue Jays continue to swing the ball around the horn. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Here's Saunders. Top of the key, over to Sarda. Sarda decides to drive. Stops, pulls back. That one doesn't need anything except for the hands of Van Clunen, and it goes the other way. Yeah, Spingola with her hand on the ball. Got a, got a piece of that shot to deflect it. Spingola. Nice pass and excellent passing again. And that one put up and in by Van Clunen. And it's now a 9-2 lead, a 9-0 run right now for Marquette. And Marquette adjusting very quickly to what Creighton is trying to do defensively. Elger to Agnew, and they're going to call Agnew for a travel there, and that will lead to the first substitution of the game for the Blue Jays. Michael Parham is going to enter. We'll also see Chloe Dwarick. And you're absolutely right, Rob. Great adjustments after the first couple of possessions by Marquette, and that's why they're on a 9-0 run. Well, and what they've done so well in transition, the Jays do want to sag off of one of the post players and try to double and, and force an outside shot by these post players, but the, the second post, the four and the five, are working so well together to get those inside looks without getting set. They have done an excellent job so far. Here's Lauren Van Clunen once more. We've said her name a ton to begin this one. Instead, she gives it up. A three put up by King. She misses, but a great job on the glass by Spingola, and Marquette has a second chance. Marquette so good at rebounding. It's one of the problems that they present every opponent they face. They have out-rebounded every single team this year. Excellent drive. The shot missed, though, by Jordan King. And Jordan King, uh, just a freshman, looks so poised already in her second Big East game. Agnew decides to go the other way. An excellent decision. That leads to a foul and a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Get the chase down by five. Well, you like the aggressive take there by Agnew. Creighton's half-court offense has struggled early on, and rather than setting it up, Agnew just takes it to the rim. It's something that Creighton has done a lot this year when they struggle putting the ball into the basket. Sometimes they just give it to Jalen Agnew, clear out, let her drive, and hope for opportunities like this. 19.3 points per game on the year. Again, Big East play with 23 points versus Georgetown and the 31 we talked about in the pregame versus Villanova, that free throw up and good. And at the free throw line there too, she also leads the Big East in free throw percentage, better than 90% at the line. That's not where you want to see her if you're Marquette. Only missed four free throws all year long. That's Jalen Agnew. Selena Lott. 
Looking the ball around. And Clunan inside. Nice job there on the turnaround over the freshman. Misses, though, off the front of the glass or the iron. Interesting to see Dwarak running point here and trying to get Sarda off the ball to jumpstart her offense. Not off the ball movement, but not a whole lot there as Elger puts it up and Marquette's able to get a rebound. Tia Anderson making her first appearance in this one. Bingola was trying to get the ball to Lauren Van Clunen there, but the pass was high. And that will lead to the first media time out of this one. Marquette up 9-5. First quarter continues next. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Quite a bit early on in the pregame, you see the comparison of these two teams. And Rob, we've mentioned it, Marquette's so good at rebounding the basketball. 40 plus rebounds in four of their games this year, and they've only played 12 of them. Well, and they're plus eight. That's the impressive part, too, is they keep their opponents off the glass. Not only are they gathering it, but preventing their opponents from getting it. And they've already had a couple of second chance opportunities. And the Blue Jays trail by four. Excellent defense. A nice pass inside to Michael Parham. I don't know if she expected that one, though, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, you could see what Agnew was thinking, trying to get it in there. That was a tight space to try to deliver that pass to have the freshman Parham not only gather it, but get a shot off in those tight quarters. And Ben Clunan picks up her dribble. Here's a three-point shot put up and missed by Lott. And the ball is going to go out of bounds off of Marquette and over to Agnew and the Blue Jays. Then Rel Lubo into the game for the first time. The freshman from Massachusetts knocked that one out for Marquette. Almost 20 points per game this year for the Golden Eagles coming 
via freshman. Here's a three-point shot by Sarda. She will get fouled, and so she will go to the free throw line for three shots and an opportunity to make this a one-point game. Yeah, not the person uh, you want to put at the free throw line. Sarda, such a good free throw shooter among the league leaders last year at the line. This year, not too shabby at 81%, getting three. First one off the front of the iron. Shakes her head. That doesn't happen very often for her. Only the eighth missed free throw of the season. She snapped out of an offensive funk last weekend, though missing her first two free throws here. She snapped out of that funk in the, the two road victories to open the Big East play, averaging 14 points in that road sweep. It's one of the three, and yeah, Rob, she was five of eight in those two games from the field. She had a six-game stretch going only two of 23, so it was, I imagine, very good for her to just start seeing the basketball go through the basket, and especially with Tatum Rembaugh missing those couple of games as well. They need someone else to step up offensively due to the Blue Jays. Rubo with Brodsky in front of her gives it up to Spingola. And Marquette. Looking inside, here's Anderson, turn around, puts it up off the front of the iron, started with the board. Blue Jays trail by three, after falling behind nine to two, some good defense, the last few possessions, Agnew for three, that one just a little long, rebound taken in by Cameron Taylor. Hot looking inside, excellent defense by Agnew, but good recovery by Selena Lott. Looking in to Anderson, double team, and. Almost leads to a turnover. But still 10 on the shot clock for Lubo. Lubo behind the back, four on the shot clock. Gets it back to Anderson. Anderson with the pump fake. Excellent work. And Marquette's up by five. How about the patience from Marquette there? Good defense from Creighton for 29 seconds. Just didn't close it out. Nice job by Sarda Parham with the rebound. Whips it out to Brodsky. And now Agnew has it. But absolutely, as a foul is going to be called against Tia Anderson. Yeah, Rob, what Creighton did on the defensive end there, and then still to get a couple of points, Marquette's got to be feeling great about that because that possession didn't look like it was going to go anywhere at one point in time. Well, then here on Creighton's end, Marquette picking up a pair of fouls. Parham kept this possession alive for the Blue Jays, but she had the ball, and she's the biggest player for the Jays. You would have liked to have seen her go straight back up with that offensive rebound. Instead, now they still have a possession. Can they convert? 15 on the shot clock. Here's Sarda driving in. She misses it, and a nice strong rebound there by Cameron Taylor, and it goes the other way. Lou Bow, some contact there. No foul called, though, a good no call. Here's Anderson, pump fake, but she took a couple of steps, and that's a turnover on the Golden Eagles. Again, when Marquette slows down enough to allow Creighton to set up their defense, it's working. Now, when Marquette was effective in the first couple of minutes in transition, didn't allow the Blue Jays to get their defensive set up, and they took advantage of it. Now, putting some starters back in, see if Marquette tries to go back to that faster tempo on offense. Blue Jays haven't made a field goal in over three minutes. Oh for their last four, one for their last nine. Eldridge to Parham. Oh, that was a good idea on the cut there by Saunders, but instead a foul will be called against the Golden Eagles, and so the possession will remain with Creighton. Well, they're shooting free throws already, as that's the fifth foul of the first quarter, sending Saunders to the line. That was Cameron Taylor there, and that's unfortunate for Marquette because there was some miscommunication on the pass as the first free throw falls for Saunders. But the foul, and so the Blue Jays not only retain possession, but a couple of free throw attempts. And the second one falls as well to make it an 11-8 ball game. Well, Lubeau. Including to Lubo. She looks inside. Really good defense being played on both ends of the court right now. Excellent work, though, by Van Clunen. We've seen her do that multiple times tonight. Six points early in the first quarter. The Jays had three players collapse on the ball there, leaving a pair of Marquette Golden Eagles open. 
and they convert once again. Van Clunen averaging almost 11 points per game, already has six on three of four shooting. Here's Agnew driving, stop, pop, pulls up, and that one goes down. Nice play there by the senior. Uh, the Jays are going to need every bit of her offense once again tonight against this talented Marquette squad. A nice turnaround. Short J there by Taylor, but she misses just a little strong. Jays could get a two for one if they like. Elger will pull for three. And that one just a little strong. And Marquette has it now, an opportunity for a two for one as well. And they'll slow things down. Spingola to LeBeau. And now Selena Lott. Just a tremendous season so far. Excellent pass there to Taylor. Very strong on it. And Brodsky with the rebound. Once again, when Creighton's been able to set up the defense in the half court, they've come away with the stops. But when Marquette's pushed tempo, that's when they've been successful. Here's Olivia Elger. Decides to give it up to Brodsky. Brodsky with the floater and just a little short there. And so the lead will remain 13-10 for Marquette as the first quarter comes to an end. More to come on the other side from DJ Sokol Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. It's just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. As the second quarter begins, Blue Jays went three of 14 from the field in the first quarter, 21 and a half percent shooting, six of 15 for Marquette. Here's Sarda with a pump fake, and Jays begin the quarter with one field goal made, and two more to match what they did in the first. Yeah, you'd like to say if you're a Blue Jay fan that that's an anomaly. They really have had struggles shooting throughout this season. As a team on the year, only shooting 38 percent. Nice job by Taylor in there. She goes to the ground, but no foul is going to be called. And yeah, this is an offense for the Blue Jays that has had some 
fits at times, and then they're able to just go on some runs, and that's why they have a 10-3 record overall. Sarda decides to drive along the baseline, kicks it out, it was tipped. As Elger chases it down, only seven seconds remain though on the shot clock. Olivia Elger, Spingola in front of her. Elger drives left hand, and more free throws upcoming for the Blue Jays. They shot six in the first quarter to zero for Marquette. And he likes that aggressive take by Elger, getting guarded by Spingola, a little bit more size. Forcing her to the rim and producing positive results as she can convert on the free throw line. Impressive to be able to come away with something out of nothing there when she picked up the ball in the backcourt after it had been tipped and she only had nine seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, that possession really could have gone awry. Instead now, a 12-4 run for the Blue Jays gives them their first lead since it was 2-0 here at DJ Sokol Arena. And Clunin over to Jordan King. Here's Lott, that shot was tipped. Rebound inside by Murata. Here's another board, Van Clunen goes up, she misses that one, and another rebound this time by Selena Lott. So good at getting rebounds are the Marquette Golden Eagles, and now with eight seconds left, they pull it back for a moment. Lauren Van Clunen looking inside, tips around a couple of times, and the Blue Jays come away with it. Here's a pull-up J by Saunders, and that one goes in, and the Blue Jays with their largest lead in this one. It's aggressive take early in the shot clock by the sophomore there, but had the spacing. She knew that had the numbers, did the Blue Jays. Singola, she sends that one a little too high, was looking to get it to Selena Lott, and it goes out of bounds in front of the Creighton bench, and the Jays have it again. Yeah, the unforced turnovers hurting Marquette. That's their fifth turnover of the first half. 0 for 4 from the field here in the second quarter. The tide is quickly turned back in favor of the home team. And only two turnovers for the Blue Jays. We mentioned it earlier. This is the second best team in the country at doing so. A scoop shot there by Rachel Saunders and the Jays lead has ballooned to five points early in the second quarter. Bingola, you can tell that was a pump fake or if she was about passing it, either way, a foul is going to be called. Van Clunen had the ball. Yeah, Griglione posting up against Van Clunen. It's Griglione getting whistled for the foul for the Blue Jays. Altia Anderson re enters the game for the first time this quarter. Bingola puts up a very quick shot, and Anderson. Gets the board inside. A foul is going to be called on the floor against the Blue Jays. This will go against Jalen Agnew. So another offensive rebound, Rob. And already well into double figures is Marquette. Nine defensive rebounds, already six on the offensive end. And they only have three second chance points, so they haven't really made it hurt yet. It will remain there for the time being as the three was missed by King, but another good board inside by Van Clunen. And that shot a little strong by Spingola. And so no second chance points again. The Blue Jays have really avoided that so far. What a job there by Jordan King to step in front of that pass. She goes the other way, puts up a shot. Spingola with the board. And there's a couple more second chance opportunities. And it's 18-15. Marquette has had five shots on their last two possessions. They finally get that fifth one to fall after their fourth offensive rebound. Blue's, Blue Jays really lucky right now that those offensive rebounds have not turned into more points. Excellent drive, but an even better block. Altia Anderson rejecting Rachel Saunders as she goes to the ground. Altia Anderson had 23 blocks in her first 76 career games. She already has 21 now in 13 games this year with that swat. What a rejection. And the possession remains with the Blue Jays. No shot clock reset. Agnew, a quick three. A little short and a nice rebound there by Jordan King. A jab step by Jalen Agnew is so dangerous, but you have to respect her ability to drive, and she creates her own space for a three-point shot. Doesn't convert there, but it's such a deadly weapon for Creighton. First three-point attempt 
for her this evening. And that one missed. Excellent pass inside by Van Cluden, but an even better job by Agnew to step in front of that one. She had the idea, just not the execution with Agnew. Great athlete there to break it up. Saunders, a little pump fake, thought she might take a deep three. Sarda has it now at the top of the key. Goes right by King and puts it in with the left hand off the glass. Based by five. Yeah, the offhand finish there by Sarda, the junior, taking advantage of the matchup against the freshman. Here's Van Clunen. Nice job. Excellent work there. Backing down Griglione, puts it up with the left hand. And Marquette down by three. Van Clunen coming off a season best 19 points at DePaul last weekend. And Kicking right back up where she left off. Eight points, four of six tonight. 66% shooting, really great work by Van Cluden. Agnew to Sarda, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Joey Dwarick, out to Sarda for three. And that one bounces around, Spingola with the board. And still searching for that first three-point basket of the night. Ranked second in the league with nine three-pointers per game. Here's a three by Lott, and that one just a little off, and wow, what a job there by Anderson, and then the layup put in by Van Clunen. Ten points now on the night for her, and that was all due to Altia Anderson. Sarda came down with the rebound, but didn't come down strong enough as Anderson just ripped it away from her and created that opportunity for her teammate. Marquette now down by one. Here's Jalen Agnew, great work splitting a couple of defenders and scoops that one in. Jay's back up by three. Her length, her arm, her wingspan is so impressive. That scoop shot, because of that length, prevents the block attempt by Marquette. And Agnew is such an impressive athlete out there. Certainly is. There's a nice shot by Spingola. A two is the call as her foot was on the line. So not a tie game. Jay's still up by one. Both offenses starting to click a little bit more here in the last couple of minutes. Now we're going to see a three-point attempt there by Riglione. Two of nine can be on the arc this season. Here's Riglione. Here's Saunders. Over to Sarda. She's had a great quarter driving along the baseline. Kicks it out. The three put up a little short by Saunders. And another rebound by Altia Anderson. Quickly the other way. Here's Van Clunen inside again. And they're going to say a travel. And so another turnover for Marquette. And the ball back to the Blue Jays. Up by one in the second quarter. <laughs> My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. It's just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up.
22-21, Blue Jays leading over the Golden Eagles late in the first half. Alongside Rob Sims, I am Josh Peterson. Rob, after a, a quite a few minutes of both offenses kind of stifling, we've seen Jalen Agnew and others really start to turn things around for an exciting second quarter. Yeah, it's started to get into a little bit more offensive flow on both ends, and Agnew, of course, is a big part of it. Three-time Big East Player of the Week, including the most recent honoree. Elger picks up her dribble. It's Warwick. Thatcher looked like she was going to set a screen. Here is the aforementioned Agnew just driving right by everybody. Lays that one in, and she has nine points now on the night. Now, to get around Selena Lott is no easy task. Lott is athletic and has a long wingspan, and Agnew just drove right around her. Great work there, and great work on the other side. Anderson with a wide open look. She misses. Warwick with the board, and wow. Carly Batchelor was wide open, but missed on the pass. Here's a three, and that one goes in and out for Elger. And the Jays continue their struggles. 0 of 5 now from beyond the arc. Spingola to Anderson. Anderson. Driving along the baseline. Wow, what a play there, and it's a one-point game again. Yeah, Anderson's one of those players, too, that has stepped up her game after the departure of five four-year starters. Anderson leads the team in rebounding and averaging just about six points per game, so that's not what she's known for out there, that nice offensive move, but that was quite the finish. Excellent work, and it's a one-point game once again. Since the Jays have regained the lead, Marquette has not been able to take it back. Warwick, nice little pump fake there, goes by King, but it's rejected out of bounds. Four seconds will be on the shot clock. A good recovery by the freshman after she bid on the pump fake from Dwarak. Dwarak not the, the closing speed that some of the other Jays have, so the freshman King able to recover and get the block. Morel Lubeau re-enters this one. Agnew, two seconds on the shot clock. She needs to put it up. Deep three, and they say it does hit iron. I don't know if it did, and Lubeau now the other way. Lubo with a pass along the baseline. I think Jordan King thought that it was touched by a Blue Jay. Instead, it goes out of bounds off of the Golden Eagles. Yeah, just a tough bounce past that angle. That's the seventh turnover for the Golden Eagles. Jays with 10 points off the first six turnovers. Can they take advantage once again of Marquette's mistakes? A minute and a half to go in the first half. Sarda hands it off to Agnew and gets it back very quickly. Sarda for three, and the Jays continue to struggle beyond the arc. A foul is going to be called on the floor on Peyton Brodsky, and it goes the other way. And that's, again, it's... Oh, excuse it, me, it's on Elger. It's an extreme right now that the, that the Jays are 0 for 7, but their, their shooting percentages are down from previous years from three-point range. They're just a 33% shooting team from beyond the arc even though they're still averaging about nine per game. So they're taking a higher volume and just not making them. And a nice drive there on the other side. And it's a one-point game again. A great feed from Van Clunen finding the cutting King. A strong finish by the freshman. Good work there by Jordan King. Here's Brodsky. And that one once again in and out. And so you're right now 0 for 8 from beyond the arc. But there's been four or five of them that have almost gone in. This doesn't matter, though. We need those shots to fall. Marquette up by a point as the first half comes to an end. Spingola to Jordan King. What a pump fake there by Spingola, and she gets the three-point shot to go, and Marquette's up by four. And Marquette now draining five of their last six shots. Creighton's missed their last five here, trying to close out this first half with something on the offensive end. And a foul is going to be called there on Nurel Lubeau. She didn't agree with that foul call. Just the slight hand touch there, and that'll get Selena Lott off the bench to close out this defensive possession for Marquette. Isabel Spingola came into this one 41% from three, and that last three 
gave Marquette a four-point lead. Will the Jays make it a little closer? Excellent pass from Sarda to Brodsky on the back cut, and she is unable to get it to go. Marquette with the rebound. Will they get up a shot? They will not. And so the first half will come to an end with Marquette up by four, 28 to 24. More to come. Halftime festivities coming up on the other side. Golden Eagles up by four on the Blue Jays. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're at halftime at DJ Sokol Arena in Omaha, Nebraska for this matchup between the Marquette Golden Eagles and the Creighton Blue Jays. The basketball world lost an absolute titan this week when NBA Commissioner Emeritus David Stern passed away at the age of 77 on Wednesday. During Stern's legendary run as Commissioner of the NBA, he helped found the WNBA with Big East Commissioner Val Ackerman, who served as the league's first president. together great voices right at the start great energy we're getting excited about what we do all right you know how together you are you know how hard you're gonna work but you also know how good you are let's go show them one two three together this is our time when we bring it we bring it together and we all locked in we coming back in this locker room with people for victory that's the big east way the 2020 women's basketball tournament at Wintrust arena get tickets now it's halftime at DJ Sokol Arena for tonight's matchup between the Marquette Golden Eagles and the Creighton Blue Jays. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's episode, Megan was joined by reigning player of the week, Jalen Agnew from Creighton. Now, welcome into Big East Fast Break Creighton Senior Forward and the Big East Player of the Week, Jalen Agnew. Jalen, your team is off to a 2-0 start in Big East play, and you won both of those games on the road. How crucial is it to get road victories right at the start of conference play? 
Yeah, it's very crucial. Um, you know, this season in the Big East is going to be very competitive. And so we knew we had to start out strong. And so getting those two road victories were a good stepping stone um, for hopefully the rest of the season. In your most recent game, in your win over Villanova, you scored 31 points. That's the second time this season that you've had a game where you scored at least 30 or more points. When you get into such an offensive rhythm, how would you describe that? Um, I don't know. It's... Um, you kind of can't tell at first, then and, and all your teammates are hyping you up, and you're like, all right, well, I guess I should just keep going. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's just it's, um, really cool. And um, like I said, my teammates always hype me up, and so it's um, it's fun like hearing from them um, that you're doing well. And so, um, yeah, so it's been, it's been fun. How were your teammates able to hype you up in your game against Georgetown, where you didn't score the bulk of your points until the second half, where you had 20 of your 23 points? Mm -hmm, yeah, um, they told me to stay aggressive, them and the coaches, um, you know, especially from the coaching staff, they're like, you know, sometimes we need you to be the one to start our offense, get our offense going. And so um, just to be, use that in kind of like an unselfish way and like to, when I start to get going, that hopefully everyone else has to get going as well. I remember talking to your head coach, Jim Flannery, back at Big East Media Day, and he was saying one of his hopes for you this season is to just have fun. Mm -hmm. We're two games into the conference season, but you've had a lot of basketball that you've played so mm -hmm. far. How much fun are you having? A lot of fun. This is a super fun group. Um, actually, we, we started this new thing this year, um, and so I don't know if you know about the Chicago Bears and how they have their club dub um, thing after they win, and we kind of started doing our own version of that. And so after every win, we um, we have like lights and we turn we turn the lights off and we have our own like strobe lights type thing and we play music and we like dance after every win. So that's kind of been super fun to just enjoy every win, especially like we've had a couple ugly ones like Flanna said. And so just to you know, wins are hard to come by, and so to get those wins and just enjoy it and keep that going. Whose idea was it to start that? Um, actually Olivia Elgers, because she's from Chicago, and so she um, she knew all about that, and so she's like, I think it'd be a super fun thing. Um, to do so she took it to the coaches and they thought it was awesome and so we've been doing that so far and it's been super fun. Jalen you're one of three seniors on the team this season you also lead your team in scoring how would you describe your leadership and your ability to really when all of your teammates are relying on you? Yeah um I our coaches talk about or talk to me about being more of a vocal leader um and I I'm not so great at that I like to lead more by action kind of and so um, I think that's where um, I've done better at. It would be the um, action and um, kind of, you know, the, like Olivia's great at the vocal leading and so is Temi. And so um, they kind of take that side of it and I, um, I'm i more of like the leading by action type thing. Um, and so that's kind of where I kind of start, um, start in my leadership, I would say. I love that, Jalen. Thank you very much for joining me and good luck this weekend. Thank you so much. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Welcome back to Omaha, Nebraska, and DJ Sokol Arena. Marquette 28, Creighton 24 with 20 minutes to go. And we welcome you back inside the arena. He is Rob Sims. I'm Josh Peterson. You know, Rob, it was an interesting first half. Marquette led by as many as seven. The Blue Jays led by as many as five. And now it's a four-point game with 20 to go. Well, and talking with Coach Duffy before the game, too, she, she mentioned wanting to keep Creighton from getting perimeter looks. 0 for 8 from downtown. Coach Flannery talked about wanting to control the rebounding battle. He didn't do that. They're minus nine. Creighton is minus nine on the glass there in the first half. So just a four-point lead for the visitors. Creighton was down 10 at halftime last week on the road at Georgetown. Still a lot of game to be played, but the first half stats look in favor of Marquette. Let's take a look at what we saw in the first half with some highlights, and you just mentioned it, Rob, a lot of second chance opportunities, and that was certainly the story in this one. There was a nice shot at the buzzer by Olivia Elger. Now Creighton just struggled to get going, shooting just 30% there in the opening half. Marquette not a lot better at 39%, but when they were taking advantage of cuts like that, 
when they had a double team and found the open shooter, Marquette was effective in the first half. Lauren Van Cluden, you saw her there on a couple of highlights. Came into this one averaging 10.7 points per game. Already 10 points in the first half. And you saw a shot there, a nice one by Rachel Saunders. And the Jays, this is how they got going, Rob, in the second quarter. A lot of driving inside, especially by Jalen Agnew. Yeah, those points in the paint really exploded in the second quarter for the Blue Jays, but the nice cuts from Marquette were effective. The balanced attack by Marquette, six players scoring in the first half, Creighton getting no points off of their bench. That was a great shot late in the first half by Spingola, and you see the stats there, you mentioned it. 0 for 9 from beyond the arc for the Blue Jays, only 30% from the field. And Marquette, I mean, it's not like they're feeling great about their field goal percentage, but they will certainly take those numbers compared to what the Blue Jays did, 25 boards versus only 16. Yeah, and it was a, a dominant performance on the glass in the second quarter by Marquette as they built their lead a little bit more from that three-point lead they held at the end of the first quarter and surged back ahead after Creighton controlled a decent portion of that second quarter. Yeah, one of the things that kept the Blue Jays in it were seven turnovers for Marquette. The Blue Jays finished with only four in the first half, but it really was the second chance opportunities. Eight offensive rebounds for Marquette versus only four for Creighton. And, and really, Rob, the, the Blue Jays are, are, are kind of lucky that they're only down by four because the Golden Eagles did not really take advantage of all those offensive rebounds they had. Well, and talking with Coach Flannery, he mentioned last week, he said, I'd say, how do you feel about coming away with a, a nice road sweep? He's like, well, we played two good halves of basketball. So they played a very good second half at Georgetown. They played a great first half at Villanova. They played two not so good halves in, in the other two halves, but they still what was good enough to come away with a win. I would think he would say this was not a good half for his team. Still a chance for them to play better in the second half to try to come from behind for another victory for the Blue Jays. 28 to 24, Marquette with the lead, and we have more basketball to come. Quarter number three, up next here from Omaha on the Big East Digital Network. <laughs> My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up.
TJ Sokol Arena. You see Marquette there in the foreground, Creighton in the background, as second half is just about to get going. The Golden Eagles with a four-point lead under first-year head coach at Marquette, Megan Duffy. You see her there on the sidelines. Nine and three start so far this season. Yeah, such a, uh, she's been a great coach her first two years at Miami and now transferring over to Marquette and leading the squad. You see her as a player, a tremendous player at Notre Dame. Took her teams to a couple of Sweet 16, Sweet 16 appearances, a two-time All-Big East first team selection. And, uh, and then you see that academic All-America status at Notre Dame nonetheless to, to be not bad. Uh, getting good grades <laughs> at Notre Dame is not to... Uh, be poo pooed, and then she went on to play in the WNBA, a professional career overseas, came back to, into coaching, and again in her first season at Marquette, her third season overall, and she has helped this team again. This team set a team record last year, program record, 27 victories, the Big East champions, lost four, five four year starters, picked to finish ninth in the Big East. You know, forget all that. They're 9-3, and three and their RPI is 37 right now. Creighton with 14 RPI, nothing to uh, bat an eye at, but the Jays have their hands full with this Megan Duffy-led squad. A top 40 RPI replacing all five of the starters who are four-year starters and the head coach. I'd say that that's a pretty solid start here for Megan Duffy and the Marquette Golden Eagles. Jordan King with the rock, giving it up to Lott. Lott looking inside of Van Clunen. And good defense there by the Blue Jays. It goes the other way. It looks like Van Clunen was caught between. Did, did she want to get the shot off, or was she trying to pass it to Murata? Either way, it goes down into the Blue Jays' hands. Van Clunen, 10 points in the first half. Basically at her scoring average. Here's the three by Sarda, and that one short again. Great rebound, though, inside by Agnew. She puts up a shot a little strong, and the rebound taken in by Chloe Murata. Yeah, Agnew just missing the angle there because a little bit too close to the baseline, couldn't bank it off the glass, which she would have preferred to do. And credit the defense by Selena Lott. Van Clunen going inside to Murata. Murata back to Van Clunen, excellent give and go, but better defense by the Blue Jays, and they take it away. Coach Duffy asking for some contact to be whistled there. No luck for Marquette. There's another three, sort of very long on that one, and another board by Murata. Sarda's first shot was flat, this one too strong. Every Blue Jay struggling to find that outside touch tonight. There's Murata inside and another miss and the rebound by Agnew. Credit the block to Agnew too. Although she had gotten beat on positioning, kept that long reach and came away with the block. Saunders to Sarda again. Sarda decides to drive inside this time and gets it to go in one. And so the Blue Jays down by a couple with an opportunity to make it a one-point game. Yeah, you know one of the three-point shots is going to fall at some point, but until they do, <laughs> that might be what you want to do is come off the three-point line, put a little pressure on the defense for Marquette, get yourself to the line for an old-fashioned three-point attempt. So Temi Sarda very aggressive to begin half number two. And it results in a couple of points and another free throw missed. Wow. Already three now missed for her. And she came into this one 80.6% from the free throw line. Foul on Rachel Saunders. Yeah, not a great night for Sarda shooting the basketball. Three for 10 from the field, 0 for 4 from beyond the arc. And the shocking stat, the one you just said, just 1 of 4 at the line. But you got to credit this Marquette defense. They have been tough throughout. And that is exactly what Coach Duffy wanted to do, is challenge them on the three-point line. Oh, outside of a run, Rob, by the Blue Jays in the second quarter, we have seen tremendous defense by the Golden Eagles. Here's Van Clunen with a miss, and Agnew is able to take in the rebound. So both of these teams struggling to begin half number two. Only two total points total, and there's a big three by Agnew. Agnew wins the first three of the game, and an offensive foul is going to be called on the other side and gives it right back to the Blue Jays. Just a turnover. I don't think they called the foul there. And Coach Duffy again begging for a foul to be called against the Blue Jays as her player hit the deck and the ball went out of bounds off of her. She thought the contact is what forced 
her to go on the ground. Yeah, good call by you, Rob. No foul called, but the Blue Jays have the basketball. All five points in that second half have come by them. Here's Agnew driving inside again, and now she'll go to the free throw line for a couple. And the whistle's definitely going the way of the Blue Jays right now, but a little bit of contact both ways. Creighton getting rewarded. You mentioned it, no free throw so far for Marquette in this one. Creighton shooting their 10th and 11th here. Selena Lott was called with the foul, and now Agnew with four quick points in the span of about 30 seconds, and she is up to 13 on the evening. Make it 14, Blue Jays up by three. Agnew with 31 of Creighton's 58 points in that win at Villanova. Might have to carry the Blue Jays in this second half as they continue to try to score some points. Marquette, they're looking for their first basket of the half. Here's Anderson, a nice pass to Van Clunen. Van Clunen a little short on the turnaround. Anderson, though, with a nice rebound, and then she is fouled. Yeah. Olivia Elger picking up the foul. Great opportunity here. You see Van Clunen the tank. That's what you want, but again, another offensive rebound for Marquette in the person of Anderson. She is one of three Golden Eagles with six rebounds in this one. Altia Anderson, 53% free throw shooter on the year. She misses the first one. Nine offensive boards now for Marquette. They are making it incredibly difficult on the Blue Jays defense. It's the second one to go, and it's a two-point game. Still looking for their first field goal of the half as the Jays have started finding some rhythm on the offensive end. And another foul is going to be called on Selena Lott. Yeah, Selena Lott disagreeing with the call and officials whistling her for the hold as Agnew trying to cut through the lane and Lott whistled for the infraction. The good news for you Marquette fans out there, that's just, that is Lott's second this quarter but just her second of the ball game, so no trouble there yet. A couple of quick fouls. Here's Agnew, great cut beyond the lot, and just a little short there, a big board by Cameron Taylor. Agnew's had a couple of easy looks inside, not easy, but close looks, contested by Lott, and not able to get him to go. Nice drive there by Anderson, but another short shot. Blue Jays almost turn it over on the pass from Parham to Sarda, and she takes it the other way. Blue Jays have a one person advantage, it was five on four. Here's Parham inside off the glass, and the Jays are up by four. And the freshman going up against Altia Anderson there. Nice job to get rid of it quickly. Not give Marquette an opportunity to get set. Taylor hands it off to Lott. Lott with the pump fake on Saunders, and another foul is going to be called on the floor. This game's really grinded to a halt, Rob, over the last few minutes as a bevy of fouls have been called on both sides. That's the third foul for the Jays now. Three fouls for each side here in this quarter, so we might see some free throws as we get closer to the end of this one. Anderson, it's a lot, lot along the baseline. Wow, what an up and under by Selena Lott, and Marquette's down by two. There was no space in there at all. I thought she was going to just drive through and kick it out, but somehow got that shot to go. What a take. Incredible. Here's Elger. Here go with Parham for the time being as she skates along the baseline. And a nice job there by Jordan King to step in front of that pass. Here comes Marquette the other way. Anderson able to chase it down. Gives it up to King. King near the free throw line. A little short there, and Agnew gets the rebound. Sixth board of the night. Seventh, excuse me, for Jalen Agnew. I like to see the intensity from both sides is kicked up a notch and you can feel that here in the third quarter. Both teams want this victory. And another foul is going to be called on the floor. And so it will remain with the Blue Jays. Yeah, so 14 foul already on Marquette here. So still five minutes to go in the quarter. I put the Jays back at the free throw line. That's Cameron Taylor, her third. Jays with nine points so far in the quarter. Excellent cut, but Sarda is rejected. 
And the, oh, the other way goes Selena Lott. A nice job with the Euro step, and she gets it to go, and it's now a tie ball game. What a swing there. It looked like there could have been a foul on Marquette. None called, and Lott goes the other way, gets the layup to go, and it's all tied up midway through the third quarter. Here's Sarda for three. That one falls, and the Jays back up by three. Well, you can see Sarda open, asking for the basketball. By the time she got it, Marquette had closed out a little bit, but Sarda had her feet set, ready to go, and didn't let her first four attempts that she had missed phase her and knocks that one down. Great pass by Lott to Anderson, and it's a one-point game again. Great pass, great execution. It's pretty good defense by the Jays, too. Just a nice, a better finish by Marquette. Blue Jays started this game 0 for 10 from beyond the arc. They are now two for their last two. Batchelor outside to Dwarick. And she gets it back from Agnew. Jay swinging the ball around. Sarda back to Dwarick for three and make it three for their last three. And the Blue Jays are up by four. Well, you know they're capable of it. You can never count them out even after they miss their first 10. They're so dangerous from outside. Here's Selena Lott driving in. Goes by Parham. What a pass to Chloe Morata. And it's a two-point game again. Well, there you see. Two freshman posts out there for the Blue Jays right now. The miscommunication allowing the double team and the recovery just wasn't there by the Blue Jays. Marquette takes it full advantage. Arm hands it back to Dwarick. Dwarick picks up her dribble, gets it over to Carly Batchelor. She gets it back. She's going to put up another three. Jays now four for their last four from beyond the arc. And it's now a five point game. Well, Dwork doesn't score very much, but when she does, she is capable of scoring in bunches, and Megan Duffy doesn't like her three-point defense. That leads to a timeout, and the Blue Jays are up 5-5 with 3.12 to go in the third quarter. She's starting to make some shots from beyond the arc. More to come on the other side. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Presented by SoFi alongside Rob Sims, I am Josh Peterson. 
The threes have suddenly started raining down for the Blue Jays, Rob, and they're up by five, matching their largest lead of the game. Well, we had talked so much about how Coach Duffy for the Golden Eagles didn't want to allow Creighton to get going from the outside, and that's exactly what they've done here in the third quarter. Nine field goals made in the entire first half for the Blue Jays. They have six in this quarter, and they've made their last four shots from beyond the arc, and a nice defensive play there. And the ball will go out of bounds. Carly Batchelor did a good job to step in front of it. Looks like a conversation might be had by the refs, and that will lead to another break. Blue Jays still up by five. Third quarter resumes next. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. It's just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. by five as Marquette is about to put the ball back into play. They have a full 30 seconds on the shot clock. The refs convene and they reset it. And so essentially what they said was, Carly Batchelor had the ball and then she lost it. So it was an actual possession and it's not gonna matter as a long three is put up and missed there by King. That designed play to get King that shot in the corner. And she misses everything. Zarda to Agnew, two Blue Jays in double figures. Will Dwarak continue the hot shots from three? That one almost went down again. And the rebound taken in by Jordan King. Well, we've seen Dwarak knock down three in a game. We've seen her knock down four in a game in her career. She doesn't score very much. But when she gets going, she gets going. Lauren Van Cloonen is called on the charge there, and so it's been a tough half for her. She had 10 points in the first 20 minutes. And she still has 10 points, 0 for 4 from the floor this half, and then an offensive foul there. Just her first foul of the ball game. Warwick for Bachelor. Blue Jays on the offensive end. Rob, it seems like they're playing with a lot more confidence right now. Excellent pass inside the Bachelor from Agnew, and the Jays with their largest lead of the game, up by seven. Well, just as you say that, Josh, the confidence there, another great play by the Blue Jays, the movement off the ball, the freshman. The recipient of the great pass from the 50-year senior. 
And speaking of great off the ball movement, excellent work there by Jordan King. She gets it to go, she goes to the floor, and she'll head to the free throw line for an old fashioned three point play. So you go from one end, the freshman cutting under the basket and receiving from the senior. You go to the other end, you get a freshman cutting under the basket, getting it from the senior. Nice teamwork here by both sides. A good finish by the preseason Big East Freshman of the Year, Jordan King out of Rockton, Illinois. Coming off of a tough one as she misses the free throw in the loss to DePaul. Only two points on one of nine shooting. She has four tonight. Here's Agnew for three, and another one goes. The Blue Jays were 0 for 10 from beyond the arc. They have now made five out of their last six, and that will lead to another timeout by Megan Duffy. Coach Duffy not happy with her team in transition, not finding the trailer. Agnew, the trailer on that one, kicked out from Dwarick and knocking it down. The Jays' offense getting going, and you see when you get Agnew an open look. We've talked about some of her accolades. We haven't talked about all of her accolades. So not only does she lead the Big East in free throw percentage, we've mentioned that, three-time Big East Player of the Week, Oh, and by the way, she leads the Big East in three-pointers made on the season, and she leads the league in minutes played per game on the season. She has played at least 35 minutes in every single game. She's played at least 38 in her last five. Think about that. She doesn't ever come off the court, and she's still uber productive. Yeah, it is a thin group for the Blue Jays, and so they put even more on her shoulders. She's done a great job. King Gola misses. Michael Parham battling inside for it, and it looks like it's going to go off of her. Here the disgruntled fans of Van, <laughs> Van Clunen reaching in there to knock it away. They thought maybe she had a little piece of Parham's arm. I've been really impressed with the Blue Jay freshman post duo that has been out there for the last three, four minutes for Coach Flannery. Blue Jays have outscored the Golden Eagles by 12 points in this quarter. A nice job there on the turnaround by Cameron Taylor. And Marquette pulls within six. Another one of those talented freshmen for the Golden Eagles. That's a good look inside for her. Bachelor looking for Agnew. Agnew pulls up, gets another one to go, and she's now up to 19 points, pretty much right at her average, and the Jays are up by eight. Uh, and she's feeling it, too. You can see it when that look in her eye and the spring in her step. Shots are starting to fall. That means Marquette could be in trouble. Nice pass inside from Anderson to Spingola. Spingola just a little strong. And another foul is going to be called on the floor, this time on Marquette, and it will go the other way. Yeah, Parham coming down with that, and she'll be heading to the free throw line for the Blue Jays. The freshman out of Burnsville, Minnesota, only averages two points and three rebounds per game. But she's really played some solid minutes tonight for the Blue Jays here in their third Big East contest of the year. Seven of 11 from the free throw line on the entire season is Parham. I mentioned it earlier, she is the biggest Blue Jay on the roster right now. And she has that size, that six foot two frame and uses it well. She's an athletic six foot two, moves well off the ball. And gets the second one to go as well. She has really improved from the free throw line as this season has continued. Largest lead of the game for either side. It's a 10 point advantage now for the Blue Jays. King over to Anderson. Nice pass inside from Lou Bow to Cameron Taylor. It's an eight point game. Again, you see. You take the good with the bad. <laughs> the pair of freshmen out there, a little miscommunication from the post, and Marquette able to take advantage of it. Five seconds remaining in the quarter. Here's Agnew with King on her. Agnew puts it up a little short, and no rebound will be taken in. And so the Blue Jays will go into the end of the third quarter and into the fourth quarter with an eight point lead. The final 10 minutes coming up on the other side on the Big East Digital Network.
My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago March 6th through the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament are now on sale starting at just $50. For tickets, visit BigEast.com slash WBB tickets. Josh Peterson, Rob Sims as the fourth quarter begins. What a block, excellent work there by Norelle Lublo and quickly go the Golden Eagles the other way. Spingola. Pulls up, and wow, that one falls. And now, very quickly, it's a six-point advantage for the Blue Jays. Turning defense into offense. Marquette with the block, and now they get called for a hold. As again, the Blue Jays, their offense is so hard to guard because there is always movement. And talking to both coaches, it's interesting before the game that neither side has a true point right now. And, that was what Coach Duffy talked about, asking Jordan King, the freshman that's playing really out of position, trying to play point guard, and Lott will have the ball in her hands a lot. You'll see Temi started with the ball in her hand a lot for the Jays, but not a true point guard for either side, which makes it difficult to know who exactly to key in on because there's so much movement out there. Yeah, absolutely, and you can see at times for both sides, too, that I don't really know who's going to take that shot from deep. Here's Sarda. Nice job there on the pump fake to drive in and gets that one to go. Blue Jays up by eight. You know who else is playing good minutes? Even when she's not knocking down those threes, Chloe Dwarak, the former walk-on from Lincoln, Nebraska, playing some quality minutes out there with Tatum Rembau out with injury. Again, the fourth straight game the Jays have played without her. Mingola knocked down a big three late in the first half. Hasn't really been able to get going in the second half. And the turnover there. Agnew goes to the ground. She still is able to get it to Temi Sarda. Blue Jay fans wanted a foul. They don't get one, but the Jays still have the ball. And now, Rob, it's going to be interesting to see how much do they decide or try to bleed this clock with an eight-point advantage. Sarda, just right by a couple of Golden Eagles. Parham with the board, and she's going to go back to the free throw line with an opportunity to make it a ten-point game. And just as you say, you wonder about that. When the seas open up like that, you're not going to milk the clock any longer. You're going to take it to the rim, as Sarda does here. And her teammate Parham cleaning up the mess, getting an opportunity to add to her total at the free throw line. There's some good defense there by the freshman from Peoria, Illinois, Cameron Taylor, on the initial shot from Sarda. But because of that defense that they had, it just left it wide open for Michael Parham, the freshman out of Minnesota, to get the rebound. The first one goes off the front of the iron. Parm, four points tonight, seven rebounds, well above her average in those categories. 
playing some quality minutes for the Blue Jays in just her third Big East game. Second one goes as well. Marquette only made seven field goals in the third quarter as they look for some offense. Here's Anderson on the pull-up. Jay just a little strong, but chases down the basketball. What a great rebound. And you know, Rob, that is something that really did go away. The Blue Jays did a much better job at not allowing Marquette to get many offensive boards, and we saw that a ton in the first half. Well, Creighton's out rebounding Marquette here in the second half. Part of the surge ahead is because they're protecting the glass a little bit more. Selena so Lott, she goes into Jalen Agnew. The fans wanted an offensive foul. They don't get it. Agnew has a little smile on her face, and so it will stay with the Golden Eagles. There's a lot of contact on both sides. For as many whistles that have been blown, could have been a lot more that have been let go, and they're letting the play out there for the most part. Yeah, it's made for a fun one. Selena Lott along the baseline. A nice pass there to Van Clunen. Van Clunen! 12 points now on the evening. Her first in the second half after having 10 in the first 10 minutes. Well, credit a lot once again for creating the opportunity. As Agnew puts up a three, that doesn't hit anything. And so here's Lott with the rebound going the other way. Selena Lott decides to hand the ball off to Spingola, who rains down a three, and suddenly it's a four-point game with the Blue Jays up. Well, Spingola, you talked about it earlier, leads the team in three-point percentage this year, 41% from the outside, and she's knocked down both of her attempts out there today. Blue Jays almost turn the ball over. They get it back. Elger has it now with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Right in front of the Creighton bench. Olivia Elger dribbling with the left hand. Picks up her dribble, hands it off to Agnew. Jalen Agnew, and wow, the Blue Jays are going to get bailed out by a foul call as Elger goes to the ground. That's Spingola trying to fight through the handoff there, knocking Elger to the ground, giving the Jays a fresh 20 seconds on the shot clock. And you were exactly right, such a bailout, because the Jays are going to have to throw up a crazy shot to beat the shot clock buzzer as there were only three seconds left coming off of that handoff in the shot clock. And that was basically a perfect defensive possession for 26 seconds. And Agnew is going to have to put up an NBA range three. And instead now a fresh 20. Agnew with a lot in front of her. Jalen Agnew, she decides to pull up for three anyway. And that one rims out. Nice job there by Cameron Taylor on the board. So after a lead ballooned up to double figures in this half, Marquette can make it a two-point game. What a pass inside to Cameron Taylor, and she does just that, and that will lead to a timeout by Jim Flannery with Marquette down 54 to 52. Or to come on the other side, six and a half left in the fourth quarter on the Big East Digital Network. <laughs> My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. 
When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're running ahead, and we got to raise it up. the score there, 54-52 Blue Jays with the lead. Rob, they were up, the Creighton Blue Jays were, 10 points, about 38 seconds left in the third quarter. They had a double digit lead and now it's down to two and that's off of a 7-0 run by the Golden Eagles with six and a half to go here in Omaha. Yeah, 7-0 run in just 76 seconds too. That's been a quick strike by the Golden Eagles. Well, we've only had the game tied a couple of times. Only four lead changes, but it really has not felt that way. What a drive there by Temi Sarda to give the Blue Jays a, a four-point edge. Well, Creighton had missed four of their first five shots here in the fourth quarter. Big for them to get a, a point out of that timeout. It is getting intense. And Clunan trying to hand the ball off to Lott. She gets it to her. Lott for three. Just a little strong, and Sarda with a huge rebound. Quickly up the floor. Agnew picks up her dribble, back to Sarda. Players going down on the court left and right right now. Elger. Elger just weaving around a couple of Marquette players. Parham was trying to get the offensive rebound, but taken in again by Selena Lott. See how quickly Marquette wants to go or if they want to set up their half-court offense. Lott only seven points on three of seven shooting. She usually... Scores 15 tonight. And Clunan. Gives it to Lott. Looks at the shot clock on the other side. What a pass to Taylor. And it's a two point game again. And Dwarak sagging just a little bit further than she needed to away from Cam Taylor. Another one of those talented freshmen for the Golden Eagles. Seventh assist from Selena Lott tonight. And a. The officials blow it because of Elger's limping and talked early on about the injury problems that she's had throughout her career, including missing a pair of games earlier this season. So the officials are the ones that blew that dead. The Jays get her off the court. And it's already a very thin group this year. The Jays have dealt with a lot of injuries. Here's Agnew in front of the Creighton bench. Oh, what a pull-up jumper, a little strong, bounces around a few times, was hoping for the Kawhi Leonard roll, doesn't get it, Spingola with the board. She gets it back from King. Looking inside to Taylor, what a pass. Taylor unable to finish down low, a foul is going to be called on her, and it's going to be Blue Jay basketball, another huge rebound there by Michael Parham. Now the future looks bright in the Big East as all three players involved in that action, rookies, you see, Taylor with the take against Batchelor, and it was Parham coming down with the rebound. Jays with a two point edge, under four and a half now to go. What a game we have had tonight. Agnew over to one of those freshmen in Batchelor. She misses. Sarda tried to get the rebound, but what a job there by Selena Lott to save it. She has been all over the place tonight for Marquette. And Clunan directing traffic. Selena Lott doing the same. Pointing, pointing. She hasn't dribbled yet and almost held the ball too long. Almost a five second call there. She was on about four and a half. Here is Lott now, driving in. Wow, what a pass again to Taylor. Taylor puts it up, does not get the roll. Lott with the offensive board, and it's a tie game. An offensive rebound at the perfect time for Marquette. That leads to another timeout by Jim Flannery with 3.37 to go. The rebound advantage just a couple of minutes ago. I had mentioned how Creighton was out rebounding Marquette in this half, and that tide has quickly turned as in this fourth quarter alone, Marquette out rebounding the Blue Jays 8-3. to three. 
And that offensive put back here, you see Taylor with the miss. And Lott timing it perfectly and going right back up with it. And you just said Lott has been everywhere. She's below her scoring average with nine points, but she has been everywhere. Five rebounds, seven assists in this one for Lott. So while she hasn't been scoring her average at her average clip, she has been creating for her teammates. And that offensive rebound and putback was huge to draw even here. 12 offensive boards on the night for Marquette. They have 41, their fifth game this year, with 40 or more rebounds. Here's Agnew with a lot on her. Agnew drives in. She wow. wanted a foul. She doesn't get it. Gives the friendly roll, though. And Jay's back up by two. I have no idea how that ball went in. It hit the <laughs> rim on the way up and still climbed over it. Some tremendous spin and rotation on that one. Lot on the other side drives between three. Blue Jays, she loses it off of her thigh. She wants a foul. She doesn't get one, and it goes back the other way. Yeah, you could read her lips. How is that not a foul? There's, there, like we said, there, while there have been plenty of whistles in this one, they have let a lot of things go, including that maybe a little bit of contact there by the Blue Jays. Agnew now with the rock. Hasn't dribbled yet. Gives it up to Dwark. Gets it back to Agnew. I think we're going to see Rob a lot of Agnew and a lot of Lot as this one finishes up. Jalen Agnew step back to Dwarick. Chloe Dwarick looking for Saunders. She gets it to her. She almost got it to her. Rather, she fell down, but a nice play there. Altia Anderson to just knock that one out of bounds with three seconds on the shot clock. And <laughs> Conversation happening. Well, just asking coach to <laughs> kindly step back into the coaching box. You can't be at half court. You have to stay in the coaching box. Nothing malicious, though. Make a W. <laughs> a smile on her face as she stepped back. What a pass inside to Agnew. Is she able to get a shot up? She does. Oh, my goodness. How did that one go in? And the Jays are up by four. And the fans here at DJ Sokol come on to their feet. On the other side, what a three-point shot by Jordan King. What? And Marquette's down by one. Unbelievable answer, unbelievable poise by the freshman. Calm, cool, and collected, knocking down the three-pointer after the crowd was on its feet, ready to explode here. Yeah, the Jays faithful that had not sat down were on their way, and then probably a little quicker after that one. What a three-point shot. This has been an excellent fourth quarter so far. Here's Sarda with two minutes to go to Parham, Parham with a short two, and that gives the Jays now a three-point edge, and a timeout's gonna be called by Jim Flannery. Plan wants to set up his defense. What an outstanding basketball game, and not that it's unexpected. We talked about how good these two teams have been in the non-conference. We haven't even mentioned, Creighton played the strongest strength of schedule in the league, and they're still at a 14 RPI, so a tremendous non-conference schedule again put together by Coach Flannery to prepare him for the grind that is Big East women's basketball. And you see Coach Duffy there back in the grind of Big East basketball. She was here as a player, now back in her first year on the sidelines at Marquette, and this has just been a tremendous basketball game. Eagles, Golden Eagles have outscored the Blue Jays 16-11 in the final frame, and that three by King was the first make of the night for her. She was 0 for 3 before that one. Ice in her veins to knock that shot in after Agnew had put up a wild one to give Creighton a four-point lead. Under two to go. Van Cluden over to Jordan King. Jordan King, a nice pass inside to Taylor, and what a job there by Dwarick to come away with another board. And now Creighton, Rob, they really can slow things down as there are 90 seconds to go. Really important possession still here, though. You want to come away with a good look. You don't want to bleed the clock so much that you're forced to throw something up. Sarda drives in, pump fake, and she is going to draw a foul with a minute 18 to go, and the Blue Jays were able to bleed 22 seconds off of the clock there. Sarda heading to the line where she has struggled tonight, surprisingly. 81% on the season, but just one of four at the stripe tonight. These are two enormous attempts. One possession ball game right now. And it will remain a one possession ball game. 
you say it, Rob. She came into this one only seven misses from the free throw line on the entire year. She gets the second one. And now two of six on the night. Four point lead. At least though, if you're the Blue Jays, that one makes it a two possession game. Van Clunen was trying to get oh, it inside. Wow. A foul is going to be called, I believe, on Temi Sarda. Yep. Excellent cut there from Selena Lott, and Sarda gets a foul call. Unfortunate for the Blue Jays as Parham had tipped the entry pass away, and they looked like they were going to come away with it, but Sarda off the ball, holding Lott. Here's Lott for three. Gets it to go, and it's a one-point game again. The Marquette Golden Eagles now with a couple of trays in the last minute, both times when they were down by four. Now the Jays, they can't really focus on bleeding clock like you said, Rob, on the last possession. They just have to get a good shot. Here's Parham handing it off to Saunders. 44 to go. Sarda now, 10 seconds. It's a screen. Sarda to Saunders. Saunders in front of the blue chief. It's for three, and another one falls. She goes to the ground, no foul is called, and that will lead to a timeout by Megan and the Blue Jays are back up by four with 33.4 seconds to go. Look at the shot by Saunders. How bold is that? You've only hit four out of 16 on the year, and you take that one. What an incredible take from the sophomore out of Iowa City. Give her nine points. She's in the starting lineup because of that injury to Tatum Rembaugh. That might be the biggest shot of her young career right there to give her team some breathing room. I won't say put it away by any means, but they have a little bit of breathing room with 33 seconds to go. These two teams are trading three-point shots right now, but because of that made free throw by Temi Sarda, the Blue Jays are still able to be up by a couple of possessions right now. And that timeout by Coach Duffy. Again, the women's game advancing the basketball. I know you love that, Josh. Look, great rule. <laughs> I wish the men's game would do it too. Much to the chagrin of various co-workers that I have. Here's Marquette, Van Cluden now. Two second differential in shot and game clock. Selena Lott over to Spingola for three. He almost falls. And Agnew with the board. Jordan King will foul her. And the ball will go to the other side of the court for some free throws. Spingola with the great look here. That's just her first miss from beyond the arc tonight. She had hit her first two and had a clean look from Selena Lott. Just a little strong on the attempt. You see it there, played in at least 35 minutes in every game this year as Jalen Agnew and an opportunity to make it a five or six point lead. Make it five. She's up to 24 points now on the night. Two of seven from beyond the arc, four of four at the line. Yeah, and Agnew has not checked out tonight. If you're curious, she's played every single second of this ball game. Still a two possession game, but it is six points. Marquette, they need some trays right now, and a foul is gonna be called on Carly Batchelor. And that's all right, if you're the Blue Jays, you'll take that. That's just their third team foul here in the quarter. So you force Marquette to set something back up and you might see another foul by the Jays off the ball. I was surprised, Rob, at just how slow that possession was, and it allowed for that late foul. A heady play there by Carly Batchelor, the freshman out of Topeka, Kansas, and they can still do it again. Here's Lott in front of the bench for three. Long, Spingola trying to get the board. She steps out of bounds. It'll go to the other side. And Megan Duffy now imploring her team to foul. There are 13 and a half seconds left, and we'll see another substitution as Olivia Elger comes back onto the floor. Good to see Elger back out there. She had had to check out with the potential injury problem. Creighton really closing this one strong has hit their last four field goal attempts in this tightly contested ball game. Tina Anderson also back on the floor. You saw her there guarding the inbounder and Selena Lott is called for a foul with 13 and a half to go. You do want to foul and you want to foul without taking time off the clock. You don't want to foul the Big East's free throw percentage leader. And that's exactly what they did, putting Jalen Agnew to the line. 
Agnew had 23 against Georgetown. She had 31 against Villanova, and right now 25 points. A tremendous start to Big East Conference play. Front runner for Big East Player of the Year, perhaps? She's definitely a strong candidate so far with her play in the first three Big East contests. Yeah, three-time Big East Player of the Week. A conversation being had right now with the officials. One of them heads over to the scores table as Agnew is waiting at the free throw line and other players are ready for her to shoot. We're gonna see some substitutions though. Yeah, you can't check in before the first free throw. That's what they had done. So if those pair wanna check in, they have to come in after. And again, that should be the case here for the Jays as well to work and Elger shouldn't have come on. Although they were already on the offense defensive possession. Either way, everyone's confused right now in the arena. <laughs> and also the <laughs> clock has yeah, the clock has started ticking. They're gonna have to stop that, <laughs> and they do. Yeah, that wasn't a malfunction on your screen. That happened here in the arena as well. It was uh bump it back up to over 12. Marquette saying, hey, no, add another minute. I don't <laughs> mind it. Clock operator just wants to get home. It's a Friday night. 13.7, so they actually added two tenths on it from what we thought it was after the foul. First free throw falls. And now it's a three possession game. Blue Jays up 69 to 62. Agnew just one rebound shy of a double double. What a performance by the all Big East performer. And another timeout is going to be called. This will be a full one minute timeout by Marquette. So, Rob, 13 points, seven to go. It is an eight point game. So obviously you're gonna need three scores and you're gonna need defensive stops. What is the plan? Let's just begin first on offense. What does Megan Duffy tell her crew right here? It's a slim chance to still win or even tie it, but what are they trying to do down the floor? Well, you don't have to get a three because you have to get a lot of you have to get eight, you have to score three possessions. So you don't have to settle for a three and, and tossing it up if you can get inside, which Creighton will likely allow them to get to the basket. As long as they don't foul, that's all that needs to happen right here. And I would say that Coach Flannery is addressing that topic right now to allow them to get to the basket. Yeah, and obviously then on the other side when they're on defense, the thing that Creighton cannot do is turn the ball over. It goes without saying at this point in time, you were okay with catching it, you were okay with getting fouled. If Marquette's gonna come back force overtime or win in regulation, it is going to be because they're able to get at least one turnover with only 13 and a half to go. Marquette's on the floor. Creighton now joining them. You see Megan Duffy there, first year head coach. Was at Miami of Ohio the last couple of seasons. 54 and 20, or 44 and 20, excuse me, in those first couple of years. Lott inbounding to King. King back to Lott. Nice defense being played right now by the Blue Jays. Murata puts up a shot. Unable to go in. Spingola with the foul on the rebound attempt. And this one is just about done with five and a half to go. A tremendous performance, particularly in the second half by both squads. And, you know, we, we mentioned it at halftime that Creighton has, according to Coach Flannery, played two good halves of basketball through their first two Big East games, but those two halves were just good enough to win. I would think probably after this one, he'll say they've played three good halves of basketball in three Big East wins. And it, it was the second half that they came alive after scoring just 24 points in the first half. Tammy Sarda was a big reason why she came into this one, averaging 10.8 points per game. And if she gets this one to go, and she does, 17 on the night. She hit some big shots when the Blue Jays needed them. And the game comes to an end. The Blue Jays move to 3-0 and in conference play, winning 72-62. to Great second half. Outing by the home team, coming away and Executing their game plan, particularly from a three-point range, knocking down six trays in the second half to come away with a 10-point win. The Blue Jays started the night 0 for 10 from beyond the arc. They made those six, as you just said, Rob, so they finished only six of 21, but six out of their last 11. And that was the shot that brought this place to their feet by Agnew. More to come on the other side. Jays win 72 to 62.
My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. And this is just one night. You should see what we do during the day. Marquette University, be the difference. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. Welcome back to DJ Sokol Arena. The Creighton Blue Jays moved to 11-3 on the year and 3-0 in conference play with a 72-62 win over the Marquette Golden Eagles. And right now we are happy to welcome in, well, I guess we decided, the player of the game tonight, Jalen Agnew, 27 points, 9 rebounds, all 40 minutes. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's talk about the second half. Guys obviously struggled at times scoring, but things seemed to change in the second half, some big quarters. What was the biggest difference, do you think, in half number two? Um, I would say we talked a lot about um, defense and during halftime. You know, we um, gave us some easy ones to their post especially, and so we had a lock-in on that side of the floor. We knew scoring was going to come, but just to make sure and get – get a hold of that side of the floor first before we were worrying about offense too much. So did Flan emphasize that at halftime then? The defense will get you back into this, you open up some things on the offensive end? Yeah, yes, and um, a couple of our games, you know, they've been they've been like that. Um, we haven't scored, we haven't been scoring that much um, offensively, and so getting back to playing good defense and hopefully creating some offense. You know nobody in the Big East has played more minutes than you. <laughs> Are you tired? <laughs> no, I'm doing good right now. It's a long season, you know, um, after, after this um, stretch, we have um, only one game of Providence next week, so get a little rest during then, but I think we're doing good right now. One of the things we talked about today, Jalen, was the, the inability early to make some three-point shots. Started 0 for 10, and then things just seemed to flip. Like, Talk about the confidence, I guess, that you have just to continue to shoot those shots, whether it's you or your teammates. Yeah, I think we talk about that a lot, um, you know, especially when, you know, some sometimes we're surprised that we're open, um, but just to keep <laughs> st st staying aggressive and keep shooting those. Um, you know, Chloe hit some big shots for us, Rachel hit some, and so just, yeah, to keep staying with it and stay aggressive. We'd be remiss before we let you go if we didn't talk about the shot that happened <laughs> to our left there. Two and a half minutes to go in the game. Obviously, in that moment, you're just trying to get it up and get and, and just do anything, maybe hit the rim. What, what happened there? Yeah, um, the ball went right through my hands. I knew there was like three seconds left on the um, on the shot clock, and so I was like, well, this one's got to go up <laughs> somehow. So I just threw it up there and it went in. Jalen, congratulations. 27 points on 9 of 19 shooting, and as Rob mentioned, all 40 minutes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
That is Jalen Agnew as the Blue Jays move. You see it there, 11 and three now on the year, three and zero in conference play. Marquette falls to nine and four and zero and two in conference. Rob, some final thoughts on this one. What a, what an exciting game. The final score is not an indication of how close this game was and really how fun this game was overall. Oh, Marquette is such a tough squad, and it, they have drawn the unenviable task of going on the road to DePaul and Creighton as their first two games to start the Big East season. And uh, they have come away with two losses, but they fought hard tonight. And you're, you're exactly right. That 10-point margin doesn't really describe how, just how close this ball game was. And the fight, the, the jabs, the haymakers that they were throwing there at the end of the fourth quarter was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, it really was. And you could just see the intensity picking up in this one. A, a big early conference tilt for both of these teams. And the Blue Jays now 3-0 and already. On, on the other side, Marquette falls to 0-2 in conference play. And I would not sleep on Marquette still. No. Again, pick ninth, which is surprising to me. They did lose a lot of starters, but a lot of talented players out there and a heck of a, a hire in coach Megan Duffy. 72 to 62, the Blue Jays pick up the victory and they move to 11 and three on the year, three and zero in conference play. On the other side, Marquette falls to nine and four and zero and two. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday night. Thank you to our entire crew here at DJ Sokol Arena in downtown Omaha, Nebraska. Blue Jays win at 72 to 62. Have an excellent Friday night and a phenomenal weekend. For Rob Sims, I'm Josh Peterson saying so long and good night.